Hey everybody, welcome to Brute Plays. This is The Police, Fear and Surprise. This is an indie game. I had never played it before, so let's figure it out together. Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, I like to go see how the professionals do it. Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! No idea how I got so barbaric. All right, then. All right, let's turn down the audio just a little bit before we start. New game. All right. Make sure if you like this video, so subscribe, like, and comment down below for suggestions. Golden Bird, Mayor Rogers, Sex Maniac. The Fact, Freeburg. Number one paper. Mark War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Where's the Jack Boys resignation? You can get it. Come on, girl. There we go. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I, I turned to be a 60, pussy. but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least, that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. 
I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. All right. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did they come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? What's the difference? What does it matter whether it came as a surprise? My business is my own. Do you already know the name of your successor? No. Of course not. I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy... Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. The mayor offered him your position. Would that change your mind? Perhaps. Sounds possible he thinks a new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Otto Kendrick was acquitted. Many believe, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? No comment. Usually I prefer to answer all your questions, but in this situation I've got to say no comment. You think your personal relationship with the mayor could be a reason behind your retirement? Possibly. It's often difficult to say what guides policy decisions. Thank you. No problem. You're all welcome. Go fuck yourselves. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Oh shit. Popping pills over here, huh? Are you a druggie? Take the red pill. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Looks like he has cancer. Don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon.
180 days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> I see. Troy Stars getting it on. July 16th, Tuesday. Freeburg Tribune. French could replace Jack Boyd. Cleanliness of City Street increased by 20%. Hey, that's pretty good. You got it, old girl. I believe in you. There we go. Good girl. Cops <laughs> don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting. Lots of cutscenes in this game. Partners. Sorry to interrupt. Everybody oh, just wow. takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, it's a ghost. Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. You like to see tips about how the game works. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an old man, I got this. So what you got? Freebird PD organizes upcoming work assignment for into shift for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress and detects Detectives continue the investigation to the employees between shifts. Officer and detectives possess several important characteristics. Abrams. Professional shows the overall pursuit. Well, sure, Mike's not entirely liable on this. Okay. Energy. Okay. Um, 150 is below 150 is shitty. So, uh, I'm sorry, Price, but uh... oh, this is okay. Don't tell me there's another cutscene. Don't do it to me right now. Don't do it. Okay. We have a SWAT team. Okay, uh, responding to the calls, the bread and butter of police work. You need to send your officers to crime scenes before the timer expires. The mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the station from the police, and they'll take your officer to travel back and forth, so long as people are tied up in a way for our coming work. In progress. This is a hit and run at the Everyday Mall. Do I hit X? Okay. Remember how difficult the task might be is to check how many units you're allowed to send on the call. The more units you send, the more serious. There, let's just drop to your submission and give you options in the SWAT. They must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay. Your slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the scene is the presence of weapons and so on. All this can tell you how serious this case should be taken. The mission might look simple at first glance until it turns out into a brutal meat grinder. Serious can call for coming to which turns out to be a false one. Alright, you know what? Let's send Purdy! Wait, uh, it's just a hit and run, so we'll send. We'll send Price 
And we'll send, we'll send Purdy too. I don't want to send Purdy. She's just too good. Oh wait. We'll send Asano and Price. And hopefully they can get their shit together. You got this, you two. I believe in you. No messages. Last picture show theater. Theater manager reports that during a show of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempts to force way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosewood. When he was not entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater theater's security guard. Yeah, to get out there. Take Austin with you. Go get him, boys. That's what I like. That's what I like to see. My crew are hard at work. Is it gonna like be like, oh, this is what happened when I got there? Oh, it's raining. Report. When everything goes well, the police catch the criminal, nobody dies. But the truth is, sometimes criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any death. Dead cough will hurt your roster, and dead sin bones may hurt even more than living ones. Defender escape, officers in arms. That's on me. That's on me. I knew I should have sent Purdy. Damn it. Oh, let's see. Defender caught, officers in arms, civilians in arms. Austin, you're a little bit better on the force. I know you're a rookie, but you get that. <sighs> Price. Suburb. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. You know what they're doing today. Criminals fled in the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's like, oh, there's one Janet Brown lives in Alright, Kowalski. And you're sending party with you, too. Be careful. We gotta wait a sec. I want Austin back. And we got Yancey. Brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father's will. Come to one of the lawyers. If we don't dare separate them, our security guard is off tonight. We'll send you and we'll send Austin. Go get him. The ghetto. A pastor by saw some teachers attack an elderly musician and run away with his guitar. Isano, Bryce, I believe in you. So we might contact you and ask you to handle the situation, try to deal with other what whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of problems on your plate. If you include the questions parked beside the brown see the sound of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the hmm. Shout that the house is surrounded. Offenders caught officers unharmed. Let's go! Coachy and Purdy. I knew you were a good party. You got a party mouth. I still got Yancey for the next crime. So I'm not worried in case something shows up. Report on that fight. Offender escaped, officers unharmed. Damn it. It's okay, at least nobody was hurt. That's what matters in the long run. So I feel like you should be. Oh, what's this? Offender escaped, officers unharmed. Damn it. I feel like you should be sending one person that's really bad and then someone that's really good together. I want Price to become my best officer. End of the day. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'll take it. If you think you need a couple extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime. But if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Austin, I want you to come in tomorrow. Same with no, nah, you know what, Price? You're fine. Yeah, there we go. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks. I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. 
Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Why make billions when we can different. make millions? Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Like a beach. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Got very serious over here. Day three, Golden Bird. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date. So my buddy's retiring. Hey, Tato. This is my dog. Christian of Cinema's museum have found again. Gotta get the old car started. I'm the police chief, but uh, can't afford a good car. That's a bad salary. When a police officer is too tired to be effective, he'll ask for a day off. Sometimes officers will request days off, even when they're at full strength. Some of those reasons you'll. Here are farce beds, while some are very serious and overindulgers. Board in, but don't eyes at night with them either. Everybody's I mean, got secrets, you gotta make sure that these guys have your back. So, reforms rating, police officers just possess ranks! Employees begin at the lowest rank, can be evaluated in rank with one, two, or three strides once a week. You can pass out strikes and prove the rank of your any officer and any employee. If you think that no one is worthy of the honor some week, you can postpone the ceremony until later. Exinius won't go out until your people are ready. Employee of, employees of rank not only increase in trust, but also learn to command. 
Officers on the scene, sir, call you on the like form better than usual. Sometimes when cops are good rank, they start thinking about serious about their service, needing less drinking and more time spent on their jobs. Turn out to be dependable. I'll promote you. Three stripes. Stavall, you're my guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe in you. Hope you're gonna be okay, Austin. Let's go. It's another day. Freeburg isn't one of these cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can only select any song for your lecture and play it at any time, just like in real life. Well, the life of your grandfather. some little jazz in the background. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Learn how to hire and fire cops. Oh. Police station. You have a certain number of paid jobs opening for which you can hire any available applicants. Shops also have three between officers and detectives. We'll hire you for shift B. Favorite slot, time to fire somebody. No, Stavall! I just <laughs> I just promoted him twice! No! I'm sorry, Stavall. You were a good man. If you have any legal rights you have no one will ask any questions. You might need to fight it anyway. The man with that could need additional proceeding. Too old. I'm not firing you. I'll fire you. For. No, I'm not firing him. Fuck you. Received a frightening call from a local cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that somebody entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have been broken into pieces. Seems there are many. Can I hire a detective? Also, I should turn down. The music. Actually, that's as low as it gets. Okay, well, hopefully I don't get sued. Robbins, you take Roy with you. I mean, what the fuck? You take Austin with you, and you go check it out. Okay. Oh, it's making me fire someone. I'm sorry, Roy. You're too old, man. Oh. Hire you and we'll hire Chris over here and we'll we'll get him to be better. Backlog, no backlog. Okay. Got some good people now. Vandalism. Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogan on his new car. Send Valdo. Take Grant with you. Get out there, boys. It's gonna be a rough one. Hopefully, you catch him. It'll be nice. Austin Robbins, what's going on? Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Good job, guys. Good job. We get a round of applause for our officers out there. Risking their oh, lives. Eddie's Burgers. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie in a diet coat to a dangerous criminal who she's seen on television just this morning. To the at the window eating a burger. So, Val, get out there. Bring somebody with you. He's dangerous. So be careful. Report on that vandalism. Officer. It's okay. These things happen. Hopefully Robbins gets in soon. Okay, we got our men there. It's the Vol, Samadhi. What she says missing retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. It's a false alarm. That's fine. It happens. 
Mr. Boyd, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again, and now he can't get off the can in time. The line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need somebody out. Vandal. I'm gonna send you. All right, bud. Make us proud out there, Vandal. Get it. Let's get another song out here. This looks good. Play it, boys. Teo, he should be a police dog for me. Drug sales. An anonymous college came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating ring is sun cracked. Robbins, you get out there. And you take Austin with you. And you get that boy who dare sells crack to teenagers. <laughs> get him, boys. Sorry, Chief, but I quit. And one night I pulled in more cash than I earned in a month working at this dump. Mind taking me on? I guess I just was cut up to be a cop. Vandal. Gonna miss you, Vandal. For your help, Mr. Boyd. Oh, you're very welcome, Mr. Sam Sorkins. Oh, Fleet Street. The suicide threat. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline is threatening to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. Mr. So Vall, get out there. Bring some money with you. A serious threat threatening to kill yourself. Samuel Reeds you just got yourself a new job. Oh, if a serious call comes up, I'm not this end grant. Alright, we're good. Looks like we have a As police arrive, a clown is seen making blue animals for the kids. up in a raincoat pretend to be a cool customer. 11, 11. Defender escape, officers and harmed. Ah. I'd rather no one be harmed. Suicide threat. Offender caught, officers and harmed. Good job. That's my boys right there. Is that everything? End of day. Guys, take the day off. Good job, guys. Proud of you. Day 4, July 18th, Thursday. Go to work. Who is it? Go away! Whenever I'm alone at home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Oh, Laura, she can't forget your keys again. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, Asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door in his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate, and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene, or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but... All three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. God of all damn. the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. 
So we have an agreement. Sally's going to track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a It heart. gives me energy! It's why Laura left you. Let's not go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Sad. That's such a situation to be in. I'm sorry for my language. But wow. Why didn't he come into work today? Austin, where are you at? Well, you did have it. Uh, I've made you work two days in a row. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked what you see, subscribe, comment, and rate down below. You can't rate. I mean, yeah, suggestions. <laughs> you have a great day. Goodbye.